President Chandrika Prasad Santoki heeft op dinsdag 15 februari 2022 de International Energy Conference and Exhibition 2022 in Guyana toegesproken. In zijn toespraak heeft hij het gehad over het beleid en de visie in zaken duurzame energie aangaande het nationaal belang van Suriname. Wij voeren u terug naar dat moment. It sings perfectly with the spirit in which we both have cemented our relationship since we took office. A strong, committed, and strategic cooperation, building resilient societies and economies as good neighbors. Fostering an economy, but also a society towards a sustainable energy future, keeping in mind the enormous investment needed the, te- the technological skill sets and expertise to be applied, as well as economies of scale and major decisions to be made requires us to work together. Both Guyana and Suriname are on the path of development towards a sustainable economy that will make the transition from carbon-based energy to green energy. That commitment is there, voiced on many occasions. The question is more, how do we make that transition utilizing the new fund natural resources wisely, utilizing modern technology to lay a solid foundation for a more diversified, economy for generations to come. We must realize the challenging times we live in. A part of the pandemic and global financial and development risks, we also face the impact of climate change and now also of looming global instability as a consequence of political conflict. All of this will have an impact on the energy generation demands, flows, and prices. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is not only that we must transition from one energy source to a cleaner and renewable one, but also we must consider how energy itself will transform our lives and our economies as we go forward. I certainly believe that Suriname and Guyana with these new resources can help mitigate the global energy poverty, which makes it difficult for almost a billion people to develop a productive livelihood. In charting this transition, we must recognize that others have gone before us and had profited from the earned revenues to develop a modern economy and create a future path of economic development where oil and gas may not play such a significant role anymore. These fortunate countries have saved a major part of the revenues to be able to provide for generations to come. We have the same goal and commitment to our current and certainly our future generations. No doubt, We must be responsible in our approach and certainly develop our oil and gas resources in an environmentally friendly and sound manner. Human activities, including fishing, shipping, or the exploitation of marine resources are rapidly developing. Suriname, therefore, is on a path where better integration and management of human activities in the marine landscape of Suriname will be pursued. 
our offshore partners, especially Total Energies and Apache Corporation have been working tirelessly to come to the final investment decision. We also look forward to the drilling programs of other international oil companies. In 2022, a number of wells are planned in Suriname's Block 58, while Shell will drill an exploration well in Block 42, and Apache Corporation will drill an exploration well in Block 53 as well. Recently, we also concluded a bidding round for Shell shallow shore west blocks and negotiated production sharing contracts with renewed international oil companies. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in charting the way forward, a sustainable energy future, we will need to take important and fundamental decisions in the areas of energy reduction and energy education renewable energy, local content development, and strategic energy cooperation. We will need to empower our people and private sector to go a different route. In my view, in building a sustainable energy future goes with special responsibilities with the population and how they consume and save energy but also in how to mitigate the harmful impacts of the oil and gas industry. Suriname will dedicate in 2022 budget more resources to educate, especially the youth and the private sector on how energy is used in efficient, sustainable, and responsible manner. Equally, our societies must invest in green energy and promote the use of these renewable energy resources. Adoption and installation of renewable energy sources such as from gas, solar, wind, hydro, and others will offer significant benefits to our countries. We are currently collecting data to consider the feasibility of wind energy for Suriname. Villages in the interior of Suriname, which are not connected to the grid, lack energy for, house for household purposes. We have found a sustainable solution for these villages by installing hybrid systems in these villages. A hybrid systems consists of primarily energy generation by solar power generation and a diesel power generation as a backup. But we're looking also at solutions with hydroelectric power, but we still need to research on this as it has strong impact on the environment, the biodiversity and communities which we have experienced, experienced already with our hydro energy dam. So in this, we need to work together. We need to invest in research and the technology if it is beneficial for our people. That's why the commitment from countries to start investing in new energy generation technologies such as hydrogen and fuel cells is of critical importance. At the same time, those who have provided, provide and use products must invest in utilizing green energy. And while we're making these transitions, our domestic business community must be involved and prepared to benefit from these prospects to secure jobs, income, and operational capacity. Therefore, with regard to local content, we have taken a number of steps. Firstly, we are promoting local content as government. Just three days ago, a well-attended seminar 
to engage with all relevant stakeholders was organized by the government in collaboration with the private sector. Based on these discussions, a local cont policy will be formulated, including the creation of a center to promote local content. In the meantime, several initiatives have been undertaken that resulted in the provision of goods, services, and manpower from Suriname. The most prominent initiative so far has been the issuance of an expression of interest for building additional port capacity. The response has been excellent, and we are pleased to note that the four expressions considered are to be the most suitable and all have a major tsunami partner. At the moment, the government and the private sector together are working on our investment legislation. Secondly, we are developing and upgrading the formal TVAT technical and vocational education and training education in Suriname. Amongst others, in cooperation with Dutch institutes that have provided this type of education for many years in the North Sea operations. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, to secure an economy that is sustainable and resilient with growth, we have designed a concept of sustainable development beyond our borders, which basically promotes functional cooperation between the neighboring countries, Guyana and Brazil in five areas. Infrastructure, environment, investment, market expansion, and energy. And we are convinced that by pooling our gas resources, we can have a cost-effective energy source to facilitate a regional development process with energy-intensive industrial complexes, utilizing mineral resources in these countries, which otherwise would not have been possible. In the 21st, on the 21st of January 2022, the presidents of the neighboring states, Guyana, Brazil, and Suriname, met in Paramaribo for initial discussions about the strategic cooperation framework and follow-up work to develop the agenda and execution is going on. As responsible leaders, we must look ahead, far ahead indeed, but if we do not start now, we will not only lag behind, but we will waste opportunities. Mr. President, our host, Dr. Irfan Ali, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, both countries, the leaders and their people have a historic and unique task, a responsibility and obligation to manage the oil and gas resources well. To do so in such a way that sustainable and reliable path forward is set to create an economy upon which future generations can build and derive a steady income from. To do so in such a way that is done with internationally recognized and accepted environmental standards in place and to protect the world and remain carbon negative. To do so in such a way that we can successfully facilitate a transition from carbon-based economy towards a green economy with affordable energy. Our objective is to become an 80% green economy by the year 2060 and to chart this vision into reality. A national commission, Fission 2060, will be established next month in Suriname. In making the transition towards, towards this goal, we stand 
for a holistic and balanced approach that is directed at the needs of both our people and the environment. Your Excellencies, delegation members, we are delighted to be here at this conference to have given you this information, to have an idea where Suriname stands. But I'm also here with my delegation to learn and discuss synergies. I hope that at the end, we are successful in our endeavor to develop our countries based on the strategy of public and private partnership and cooperation. I thank you all and may God bless you all. Thank you.